Well, we've arrived in France for our first trip of the year, and I've got to say, it's absolutely lovely. I mean, we've had so much rain and cold weather, and oh, it's been miserable, muddy and horrible, isn't it? And here we are, 28 degrees. Um, bit of a shock to the system, I must say, because it's so different to what I've been used to, but it is absolutely lovely. I uh, don't know what it's going to do to the fishing. I mean, we've got two days like this, 28 uh, and then 26, and then it's dropping right down. So, um, yeah, it might actually be better for the fishing, I suppose, once it cools down a little bit. At the moment, in the heat, a lot of them are just milling around on the surface. I'm sure they're enjoying it. When it cools down, hopefully the action will pick up a little bit, or start to pick up. Bait-wise, I've, I've got the monster shrimp with me, which is the new bait for this year from Nash. And luckily one of my jobs is sort of testing uh, new items, and monster shrimp last year was one of them. We took it to Slovakia. It was our first time on a lake in Slovakia. And we used it there and, and caught so many fish. We really did, we had a fabulous time. Um, ended up just using one rod in the day um, because it was getting so much action. I mean, it was incredible, really. Um, and following on from that, we actually had a, a week where we are now. Uh, and it was also the first time the monster shrimp had been seen by the fish in here. And uh, yeah, they loved it as well. We caught loads of nice mirrors and comments last year. So hence why I'm quite keen to, to use it again this time. It's really lovely. It's lovely to be here. And uh, yeah, we've got a few nice days ahead of us. It was a quiet first night, no bleeps, no fish jumping, but in the morning, as the sun was coming up, it ripped off and I was into a fish. Unfortunately, the bane of my life, <laughs> the battery in the GoPro died halfway through the fight, but the important thing was we got a fish on the bank. Oh, it's a lovely spring morning. I mean, yesterday, it was so hot, it was 28 degrees I think it was, and uh, yeah, real <laughs> shock to the systems. We've had a few cold weeks, loads of rain, all of a sudden it's red hot, and the fish were up on top, so it was a quiet day. Um, but just now, sort of about up past eight really, what a scrap this was. Absolute nutter of a fish. But nice one, nice mirror, 38 pound. Once again, the old monster shrimp, his... Uh, doing the job. It did last year, as soon as I used it, it worked, and uh, yeah, straight away it's worked again, so that's good. It's going to be another warm one today, apparently, and then it cools down, it gets more back to normal. Bit of rain, bit of cooler weather, um, but for the moment it's like mid-summer, it really is. It's, it's only nine o'clock, and uh, it's red hot already, it really is, but there we go, we've got a fish. Mm. A nice little ghosty. There's a, a few ghosties and koi's and whatever in here and uh, yeah I, I like them not everyone likes them but uh, yeah I love carp with a little bit of colour and there's a nice yellow one. <laughs> yeah very nice. I know people are always interested in the, the rig side of things. Using 
two different rigs this week. One is my old faithful Slip D rig with the snowman. But for the pop-ups, in the past, I've used the hinge rig a lot and I hadn't used the multi-rig so much. I mean, it is a rig that I've used in the past, the multi-rig. Um, but for this session, and for a bit of my fishing of late, I've started to use it a lot more. And the basic reasons for that is that it's just such an easy rig to use. You know, it's so adaptable, just for ease of change. You know, I'm using the, the chog claws, size six, only little hooks, um, but they are pinpoint sharp, you know, they're, they're lovely hooks. Um, but if I need to change a hook, unloop it and, and stick a new hook on so that's that's the reason why I've sort of opted for that one this time you know it's just so easy and then on the the D which the loop forms as you put it in um, yeah I'm just I've just got a bait screw on there a plastic bait screw and on that is a 15 mil monster shrimp wafter that just screws on like that and um, there we go the rig's ready to go it's as simple as that it's on a helicopter setup, and I've used that a lot in the past. I'm using it with the Slip D setup and the multi rig setup. I mean, it's 25 pound skin link stiff, and just after the loop, I've just broken the coat in there a little bit so that it's got that bit of play in it. Other than that, it's a very simple, straightforward, basic rig, but I'll tell you what, it absolutely nails them, it really does. Yeah, it's a good rig. Bit of a pattern was definitely starting to form. Once again, it was a quiet night, no bleeps, no fish jumping. But as soon as the sun started to come up, there was a flurry of action. Yeah, and I was into more fish. Definitely a nicer morning this morning. Funny, we're just looking out, and Joan said, God, it looks a right fishy morning out there today. And uh, yeah, sure enough, we've had a bit of action. Um, lovely grey fish, this one. I was sure it was going to be 40 pounds, but it wasn't. It was just short at 39. But um, lovely fish, isn't it? What a lovely carp. I mean, they are 
crackers. I know there's some lovely fish in this lake, so yeah, it's nice to see some of them. And uh, it's funny, it's very quiet in the night. Never heard a, a sign of anything out there. Very still, very quiet. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, as soon as the sun is about to come up, um, yeah, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> there we go, that's a nice one, isn't it? Very pleased with that. Lovely way to start the day. It was only about 20 minutes before that greyfish. I'd also caught this one, which was just waiting to be photographed. A nice dark 32 pound mirror. But I only just got those back when I caught another one. Hadn't long put this rod back out actually. Um, just had that lovely grey 39 mirror. And literally put the same rod back out quick. Uh, didn't even change the hook bait, it just left the same one on. Little uh, monster shrimp snowman. And yeah, I mean, it weren't that long 15, 20 minutes, and it's gone off again. With this one on the end. There we go. I've earned me a cup of tea this morning, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Absolutely great. Loving it. Oh, there's a bit of a wind got up now, it's a bit chilly and I'll just take a bit of shelter behind this tree while I do this, but um, yeah, that, I mean that's spring fishing really, spring weather, you know, it's so changeable. We arrived in 28 degrees and I was literally sweating getting set up and everything like that, carrying all the gear down from the van, it was really hot work and the fish looked like they might be up for spawning, uh, they were certainly up on the top cruising about. Well, uh, yeah, it's certainly due for a change. Um, it's cooled down quite a bit. By the end of the week, it's actually meant to be down to freezing or just below freezing. Yeah, I mean, incredible changes from summer to winter in just a few days. And I, I guess that's sort of what I don't like about spring fishing. You know, there's a lot of people, Ollie Davis, Alan Blair, you know, they, they love spring fishing. And, you know, when it's good, I can understand why um, I, I just prefer the more settled fishing of sort of later in the year but there's no doubt this time of year can be really good you know the carp are certainly waking up and they're they're always at good weights this time of year and, and i think they're hungry you know i was speaking a little while ago to jean noel from secret garden and he was over he's just taking jones shopping actually and he said on his lake which is just up the road secret garden um, it's just the same thing, you know, the carp were sort of a little bit sort of lethargic and not much was happening. Um, but now it's getting colder and he thinks they're more hungry and, you know, and I was thinking the same thing. So, you know, I've, I've redone a couple of rods and put a lot more bait out, you know, where I was just fishing for a bite at a time. Now I've put a couple of kilos round each rod which might seem a bit of a funny thing to do when the temperature is actually dropping, it's going to be really cold. But yeah, that, that's just the way, um, it might not work of course, but I think that's the way it's going to work, you know, because the fish were less likely to feed when it was hot and they were up on top, milling about, not really doing much. Now it's got colder and getting colder still, I think that would have put any ideas of spawning out of their mind for now and they're more likely to concentrate on feeding again. Um, that's my theory anyway. So, so there we go. You know, I've got the rods back out. It's getting on for evening time now. Um, a couple of them with a lot more bait out around them. So yeah, we'll watch this space and see what happens.
quite, it was a cold night, but um, quiet night as well. But as usual, first light has brought a run. It's another powerful fish. I mean, it's hard to tell what they are, they're all powerful, so. Lovely morning though, isn't it? Cold night, I reckon it was down to zero last night. A lovely, quiet, misty morning. Cool, well that was a scrap and a half, wasn't it? I mean, if I'd lost that one, I would have said that was a, a big one, a big 40 or a 50. Just shows you, doesn't it? Mind you, it's still a nice one, but um, yeah, not as big as what I thought it was going to be. But yeah, lovely hard fighting one anyway. And he still wants to give it some. <laughs> Amazing how fit and healthy these fish are. <clears throat> this one ain't going to stop wriggling, is it? He's a nice one, isn't he? Yeah, it's been up and down the weather, but at the moment it's absolutely gorgeous. It really is. And the fish are feeding. So here we go. Right, let's put them back. Yeah, we're doing a bit of uh, tandem work on that one. Uh, I was literally just in the shower and uh, I took my sounder box with me because you know what it's like as soon as I'm away, Joan gets a run, which is what's happened. So I've come, just got in the shower, <laughs> come legging it back or cycling back and uh, it was coming in fairly easy and then it's gone on this absolute mad run at least 100 yards and that normally means one thing on here which is Nicola the sturgeon uh, and it's not a fish we particularly want to catch but she seems to like being caught in the two previous trips uh, I think I've had her five times <laughs> and as yet she hadn't turned up this week, but, um, well, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm thinking that's what it is. If it's a carp, then happy days. <laughs> sure enough, I did call it. Sure enough, it's Nicola. There you go, joint effort again. I think we've had a joint effort before with Nicola, haven't we? <laughs> oh, there we go. Right, let's get her sorted out and get her back. <laughs> there she is, the famous Nicola. Yeah, nice to see you again. To see you, nice. <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon. <laughs> oh. Well, through the course of the year, I get asked many things, mainly bait or rig related. Um, but a number of people have asked me about 
call boxes and you know how I keep food fresh, milk fresh, you know, when we're away in sort of hot places for long periods of times. And yeah, I've tried all sorts. I've had call boxes that were rubbish, uh, some that were meant to be good, which have been all right, but not brilliant. And someone put me onto these ones. And uh, to be honest, as soon as I saw it, I knew it was going to be good. It's made by Carp Green, so it's worth looking them up. Um, it's kept, <laughs> kept stuff very fresh, got some burgers in there, it's still lovely and fresh. Uh, some ice blocks in the bottom that are still frozen. And you know, that, that says everything about it, you know, it, it does the job basically. So there we go. If you're looking for cool boxes for trips abroad or for anything really, check these out because they are quality carp green. Absolute cracker. It's a beauty, isn't it? God, really nice surprise. You know, when you go without action for a little while. So, Joe and we fished other waters like this. Um, Fisherbill was one where if you left baits out for a long time, the action would stop. And baits seemed perfectly all right, but for some reason they wouldn't pick them up. And if you changed it over to a fresh one and cast it out to the same spot, all of a sudden it would go. And uh, I tried it and that's exactly what happened. Put a fresh one out on the spot, fresh monster shrimp wafter, and literally 10 minutes. And that was a result. So yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Just shows you, you can make a change. Right, there we go. Ooh. I'll just show you the other side actually, because uh, we all like the big ones, don't we? But um, you know, that is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Well, happy with that. Okay, that do. Let's get her back. Get Rob back out. As if to prove the point, this was the other one. I put two rods out. Literally, just put that fish back, and uh, the other one's gone off. It's only a little one again, but do you know what I mean? All those hours that it was out there doing nothing. And uh, just when I was having breakfast, I said to Joan, yeah, I'm just going to put a couple of fresh ones out. Normally this is a, a quiet time of the day. And there you go. So I think this is a grassy actually, um, but it just shows you, you know, sometimes um, you can change things to make things happen. and. Yeah, sometimes a fresh bait will do it. Other places, you need to leave baits out, like Rainbow and Cassie, and we used to leave baits out for days on end, and quite often, like after three or four days, they would go. But there's times and places where baits need to be fresh, uh, and this is obviously one of them. There we go. Just shows you. Put a bit of effort in and uh, you can turn things around. And yeah, gone from a, a quiet morning to a busy one. Right, I'll sort this one out and uh, I'm not going to feel it. It's a grass carp, so um, not my favourite species. I'm just going to unhook him and let him go, but there we go. He got us a bite anyway. Right, I know there'll be people out there now thinking it, so I'm going to answer the question why I've got my rod tips up in the air. And I know people think that all the time because of the amount of questions I get asked about it. And, well, there is a couple of reasons. It's just to make life a lot easier for me, really. And because of the range I'm fishing, I'm fishing about two thirds of the way across the lake. If I was fishing close ranges, 10, 20 yards out, well, I could still do it like that, but I'd slacken the lines off a little bit more. But it's surprising how quick heavy mono hits the bottom, you know. By the time it gets anywhere near where I'm fishing, that line is, is well down anyway. So there's no need for back leads, uh, anything like that. And yeah, people are always worried about fish spooking on the line. And it's not something I worry about, you know, because the amount of times I've fished with the rod tips up like this, 
uh, and it makes no difference to me catch rate basically I've caught two fish in the last hour and I've caught all my fish this week with the rod tips up like that so I know it's okay um, but the reasons when using multiple rods it makes life so much easier you know for playing fish for instance they're, they're kiting from one side of the swim to the other and if you've got the rod tips under the water it's a job and a half passing the rod to and fro whereas with the rod tips up it's really easy and you know also putting the rods out if I'm using a boat or whatever it's easy just to guide everything under the lines so yeah it does make life easier um, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever to the amount of action and uh, yeah it looks good when you get a bite as well <laughs> all over. Turns out it's not. And it's just gone off and uh, it feels like a really heavy fish, a really powerful fish. It is one of those slow plodders. actually moved this rod I've been fishing a, a central area out there and just moved it further up towards the bay there's been a lot of fish showing up towards the bay up there and uh, just for the last evening just moved it up there and all night it's been quiet and uh, yeah it's been a similar theme all week really that the night's been quiet and then you get a burst of early morning action and yeah, that's exactly what's happened again but I've heard fish up in the bay I could hear them jumping up in there at night so they weren't far away from it but for whatever reason it's morning time when it goes off anyway I'm going to switch off and concentrate on this Wow, what a scrap that was. That was incredible. And as the old saying goes, it ain't over till the fat lady sings, or in this case, it's not over till the fat carp feeds. Because <laughs> that is a chunk. Literally, last knockings. Just having the last cup of tea. And uh, that got interrupted by this one. It's an absolute lump. There we go, happy days. God, what a way to finish. Literally minutes from getting the rods in. Right, I have to get her out and uh, weigh her and everything like that, but yes, yes. Well, you really couldn't script it, could you? I mean, literally, I thought we were going to be packed up now. We're just having the last cup of tea. Had a lovely little fully scaled earlier. And I thought that was going to be the last fish. Done a little finishing piece and everything. And then, uh, just as we were saying, right, let's get the rods in. One's gone off. And, uh, well, 62 pound, 12 ounce of great big, fat spring mirror <laughs> who would have thought it eh you wouldn't believe it would you literally just about to pack up 
and what a mega battle. But there we go, 62-12, lovely French carp. Beauty, <laughs> what a way to finish. I wondered all week where them big ones were. We'd had some nice ones, but I know what's in here. Oh, God, it's heavy. <laughs> yeah, I just wondered if we'd see one or not. And talk about leaving it to the last minute. Made a bit of a habit of this recently. Did it in Portugal, literally last seconds. Done it again here. There we go, happy days. What I'm gonna put him down is he's ever so heavy. Ah, fantastic, hey, what a fantastic way to end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, what a lovely way to finish. Oh, God, they don't get any easier when they get that heavy. But there we go. That's a, a fantastic way to end a trip. It's been brilliant. We're late packing up now, <laughs> but for good reason. So that don't matter. But we're going to get on our way now. And uh, yeah, what a lovely way to end a trip. Thanks for watching. See you next time.